Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading, and this is an original William Parker saw-handled pistol. William Parker was active from 1793 to 1841, and his shop was taken over by his former partner's son and then son-in-law and run as Parker, Field, and Sons until 1877. Parker had a royal warrant and manufactured and sold guns and other items to England's police forces. The rifled Damascus barrel has a band of engraving at the muzzle, a dovetailed silver front sight, W. Parker Gunmaker to His Majesty Holborn London, inscribed on the top barrel flat, and dual engraved bands near the breech. The patent breech is gold banded, platinum lined, and has a gold W. Parker hallmark. The upper tang has dual gold bands and a fixed notch sight. The upper tang has dual gold bands and a fixed notch sight and is engraved with scroll and martial patterns. The advanced lock is signed W. Parker and has a burst, floral, and scroll engraving and a hole in the plate and pan. Martial and floral pattern engraving is also found on the trigger guard and ramrod entry pipe. The saw-handled stock has a horn 4 end cap, silver wedge plates, a silver extension on the left side, a gold number 1 inlaid on the upper tang, a checkered wrist, and floral engraved bands around the butt. Let's start at the removable butt stock here at the end and work our way forward. We have a matching walnut skeleton butt stock. You can see we have a freeform window here creating a little bit less weight for this detachable butt stock. While we have some engraved hardware at the front of this removable butt stock, the actual butt of this stock does not feature any hardware or engraving. It is checkered, however, to give us a little bit of a textural catch. And the checkering is what you expect from fine English gun checkering. It's just beautiful. Coming forward to the front of our butt stock, we have an encapsulating metal face here with an included and engraved tang coming back on top of the butt stock. Something you'll notice on this piece as we go around it is each of these screw heads is engraved beautifully. This one here with our butt stock features a beautiful sunflower type engraving. Forward of that, we have a typical British engraving of the flag, drum, swords, and other arms in a collection here. Our butt stock here just below the front face has this almost trigger guard like triangular piece here. This acts as our spring for this interlocking mechanism to connect this butt stock into the pistol grip. By compressing the underside of this metal piece here, our metal catch moves up so that this metal pin here or tenon can be slid into its hole on the accompanying pistol. On the underside of this simple mechanism, we have some beautiful engraved checkering here. We also have a sling swivel stud here at the base. The plate here between the stock and this mechanism features some light border engraving as well as a maker's sunflower stamp here. The band going around the front end of this buttstock features a classic running leaf border. Setting that aside now, we can take a look at this beautiful example of an English saw-handled pistol. You'll see these come up every now and then. Um, they seem kind of odd because we have this saw-handled fin coming back here, but you'll notice as you grip one of these, it's actually very comfortable. And it provides a little bit of a, of a support, we'll say, back here in your wrist for this very front heavy pistol. Sometimes you'll see these referred to as saw handled dueling pistols because of their ornate fashion that they are made in. And at times you'll see them sold in cased pairs. We'll start with the grip on this pistol. You'll notice we have some beautiful English checkering here on the grip. Very precise, very comfortable on the hand. We come down to the pommel at the base of our checkering, we have a band carved into the grip, and then we have an inlaid metal band around the pommel of the pistol, featuring that same classic running leaf border. The keyhole for our detachable stock can be seen here on the back of the grip between each side face of our checkering. This is also engraved, and you'll note that the screws here are engraved with the same pattern as the screw that we saw on the buttstock, as well as the stamp on the buttstock. Coming up from there, we have our saw handled fin 
coming back here out of this English walnut. We'll come up here to the top first and talk about some of these details. Coming forward on our fin, we have an inlaid gold number one here, and it features some simple shade line engraving there. Forward of that, we have a beautifully engraved barrel tang. Again, our tang screw features this sunflower or other flower motif. Our tang here itself is engraved with some classic European scrolls at the tail. And coming forward, we have some sunbursts in the same British style coat of arms as we move forward to the breech end of our barrel. We have two inlaid gold bands. One is about twice as thick as the other. And forward of that, we have our fixed rear sight. And with that rear sight, we have some of the same engraved sunburst ray patterns. Coming into our patent breech, we have another thick gold band before we get to our patent breech and our gold embezzled maker's proof mark or stamp here in this breech. As we come forward of that about an inch or so, we have the maker's name engraved into the top of the barrel. W. Parker, gunmaker to his majesty, comma, Holborn, comma, London. Our barrel is a beautiful Damascus metal here. The lines are fairly even, but it has a beautiful, almost tiger-like stripe as we move up towards the muzzle. Here at the muzzle, we have a dovetailed silver front sight. Very, very shallow front sight here. Very short, I would say about a sixteenth of an inch at most is what this is raised up off the barrel. Forward of that, we have some more beautiful engraving this time leaves running in line with the barrel all the way around. This is a 57 caliber rifled barrel on this pistol. And we have some, what looks like to be worn rectangular groove rifling here, very shallow groove rifling on this. And you don't need a whole lot of rifling on an arm like this. And it's something we begin to see in the era that this was manufactured, especially in the high quality English arms of the period. We'll jump back to our lock here. This is a beautifully executed English style lock. We have some sunburst engraving here at the tail. And you'll notice we have a small safety catch lever here with some more sunburst style engraving at the tail of the lock. Coming forward, the cock of this lock is fully engraved and it has a, some beautiful shaping in addition to that engraving. You can see here that a tail comes off of our bottom jaw and wraps around scrolling to encapsulate our cock screw that holds our flint in. Our top jaw is also engraved with a classic sunburst pattern emanating from the bolt or screw. Each visible face of the cock mechanism here is engraved with a running leaf border as well as some floral patterns and scroll work. The screw here is also engraved in that same floral pattern that we see all over this piece. Forward of that emanating from our pan, we have some more sunburst patterns and we have the W. Parker name engraved into the lock plate face. Our pan here is interesting because like you can kind of expect on several high quality English arms of the period, we have a gold lined pan here. So we have some gold that has been set or, or poured into our pan and we have a platinum touch hole liner here. And the way the platinum touch hole liner reflects that gold, it makes it look as if the touch hole liner itself is gold. But when we catch it in the right light, we can see that it is a different color. The front frizzen face of this frizzen here is engraved as well with a running leaf border and some other simple line engraving coming around the face of the frizzen. From there, we come forward, we have our external frizzen spring. I want to say and mention here that we have a little bit of a beveled border still visible around this lock. And it also features that same running leaf border that we see on the pommel and on our butt stock here. Forward of our lock in our lock plate mortise, we have a silver extension here lining up with our barrel key. And forward of that, we have a beautiful horn four end cap. On the underside of the pistol, we can make note of our beautifully engraved iron trigger guard here. We have the pineapple motif that we've come to know and love here at the front and some other typical English engraving for the period. We have a single screw set back here in the grip of the pistol. It is engraved, but the trigger guard area on our grip here is left plain. Engraving picks up on the primary bow 
of this trigger guard with a simple border that looks like little houses coming along each side of the trigger guard. We have some simple scroll work here and then our traditional British coat of arms style engraving here again with our flag, drum, swords, and other arms including cannons here. Forward jumping here to our entry pipe, we have the same British coat of arms engraving. We have some shaping done to this entry pipe to give it some volume, which we don't see a lot of on other styles of arms. It's something that becomes common for English arms, especially in this era. So we have two raised areas here. The entry pipe comes forward, then features a wedding band, and then a wedding band at the front of the pipe. Our ramrod here is a very dark wood, quite possibly ebony. And then we have our barrel under rib connected to the underside of our barrel, featuring an all one piece here, uh, ramrod pipe about halfway up the barrel. The muzzle end or the front end of our ramrod pipe features a brass bell. And on the inside of our ramrod, we have another brass tip here with uh, some grooves in it, possibly to hold a cleaning jag we can unscrew this, however, and we have a ball puller here on the inside. Coming around to our side plate side, again, we have our muzzle, we have our barrel rib and our entry pipe and our ramrod pipes. We have our barrel key here on our side plate side running from left to right as we see traditionally done. This barrel key has a little notch set in it with a small bump on the side to help you get your finger in there. Our silver barrel key plate here is unengraved, it's left plain on both sides. We have our side plate mortise as we work our way back. It does not have a side plate, however. We have a small iron washer around our lock screw. We have a single lock screw here, and it is also engraved with that same floral pattern we see repeated around this muzzleloader. Coming back here, it's past our saw fin, and we have a silver shield set into the side of this pistol. It has some simple border engraving done, kind of denoting the shape of it being a shield, but the rest of it is left blank, perhaps made and installed to be engraved later by a future owner um, or somebody that wanted to mark their ownership of this pistol. But as we see it here, it's been left plain. English arms of the muzzleloading era are truly works of art, and even to today, modern arms that are made in England are considered works of art. But this is kind of where they got their start, really, on creating works of firearms art. And it's always neat to see an original piece like this as it comes in between private collections. I'd like to thank the Rock Island Auction Company for giving me the opportunity to share this exquisite muzzleloader with you here today. If you'd like to learn more about this or any of the other muzzleloaders that we're looking at here, you can check out the Rock Island Auction Company social media pages to learn more from their great high quality photos and educational content. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.